But coming up next, she's a musician, a speaker, an adoption activist, a ministry CEO, and she's only 17 years old. Laura Valentine Locke is standing by to share her incredible testimony. Stick around, Harvest is right back. Once left abandoned by her birth mother in China, Laura Valentine was adopted twice, first into a loving Christian home in Chicago, and secondly, through God's grace, into his family. Now at 17 years old, she's a musician, a speaker, an adoption activist, and has started her own ministry in hopes of raising awareness and funding for abandoned children worldwide. Great to have you with us, Miss Laura Valentine. Thank you. Forgot to mention you're a, a cheerleader, cheerleader. And volunteer at a pet <laughs> refuge center and, you know, a, a high school senior. Yes. Yeah, so this is really quite amazing, uh, you know, the journey that you've been on in such a short time of life and the amazing things that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about your story, your backstory, and uh, kind of what brought you to where you are today. Well, um, 17 years ago, I was actually not supposed to be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were supposed to adopt another girl named Feng Li Li. Mm -hmm. um, but when they were to go to China to adopt Feng Li Li, um, the government stopped all adoptions until mm -hmm. further notice. Mm -hmm. And when the adoptions were back on, Feng Li Li was missing, and so mm -hmm. they adopted me instead. Mm -hmm. And then they brought you over to the U.S., yep. right? Yeah. What, what kind of uh, s uh, sparked your interest in doing what you do with uh, Laura Valentine Ministries? It was actually my first mission trip. Um, mm -hmm. When I was a freshman, I was able to go with my school to Uganda, and we worked at a little mm -hmm. orphanage. And um, it really hit me, you know, that that could have been my life, that mm. that could have been me. Um, and so when I came back, I... Um, the girls that I was hanging out with, like our little groups, um, they called me Mu China because I was the only Chinese person there, and they called other people Mzungu, which is white people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they Mzungu. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I came home, and my parents told me, "Do you know a little girl named Rena?" And I was like, "Yes, she was one of my little girls that I hung out with." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Well, Rena's getting adopted by a family," and it just really hit me that I could be doing that. Maybe God is calling me to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the advocacy part and the raising awareness, uh, what are some things that you want people to know that maybe they, they're not aware of with regards to uh, the plight of, of orphaned children? Well, um, I just want them to know that, you know, my mom, I have an older brother, and um, my mom, she, she didn't have anything that um, was wrong with having another child, but she she wanted a girl and she felt like God was calling her to adopt. And mm -hmm. so um, my message is to help kids get two chances to get adopted twice, just mm -hmm. like I was into their heavenly home as well as their earthly home. Mm -hmm. And adoption doesn't have to be your last resort. It can be always your first. Mm -hmm. Well, Laura Valentine, I know that adoption here in the United States can be a lengthy process and expensive. Kind of walk us through international adoption. Well, um, international adoption can be very tricky depending on the country. In China, um, the regulation back then was that um, uh, that they only allowed one child per family, preferably oh. boys. And so um, if you were a young woman and you were um, going to give birth to a girl, you could either abort the girl or you could mm -hmm. give birth to them and just let them die in what they call a cry room is where it's just a locked in room, no windows, and they just put the babies in there and they close the door and they never see them again. So mm -hmm. I was, um, they think I was born in a field and then just rescued by some good stranger who put me at the foots of an orphanage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what about, uh, do you, I know you probably feel have personal feelings about adoption, adopting children in China. Is that your goal? Do you want to get more baby girls adopted out of China? Yes, but it's not just China. I've, okay. um, I've helped 11 kids so far in the year and a half that I started this ministry. Um, kids from Uganda, the Ukraine, um, Ethiopia, um, domestic and international. So it's not, it's not just China, even though China right. is very near and dear to my heart. But um, it's other areas. It doesn't matter where. It's just um, the goal of helping as many children as possible. Mm -hmm. So where do these children, how do you even come in contact yeah. with the children, these 11? How did you Well, it's a funny. It's mm -hmm. a funny story. Um, actually, they, my parents have their own organization as well. It's called the Fung Lee Foundation, which um, I started. Uh, it does the same thing as I do, only it's a little more private, so you need to be like recommended 
um, recommended to the foundation. Um, but I started raising money for that, that foundation. But then I realized, and we prayed about it, and we said, you know, I want to do this on my own. You know, I want to start something bigger. So I just, I started this ministry. Now, uh, <clears throat> how did you raise support for that, that first adoption? There's a little interesting story around that, which is very creative. <laughs> <laughs> well, so every girl and boy, I believe, mostly girls, we all look for that one day when we turn 16 and we just want that party. We want to be the center of attention. The sweet we 16 be, party. Yes, yeah. exactly. We want to be treated like a princess. Mm -hmm. And so I thought the idea, I don't want any gifts, but I want to help. I want to help children. Why not kick it off with a album release party? I have my own CD. Mm -hmm. We just finished my second CD. And so um, I wanted to raise money for this little girl that I did meet in Uganda as well at that orphanage. Her name mm -hmm. is Maggie. And so Maggie now resides in San Diego, California, and I get to see her a lot. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. So you raised funds uh, using your Sweet 16 party, which you combined with the album release. How... Uh what, what did your, your friends think of it or the people that, your family, uh, the people that were, you know, involved in your Sweet 16 party? How did it move them? It, um, I think it inspired people. Mm -hmm. I don't know, not necessarily that I'm, like, the big example for them. But it, um, I wanted to do something that was selfless, even though that day is all about you. It's about your birth, especially for Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to give back to the community. I wanted to give back to what I came out from. So it was, um, my parents were really supportive. They've always been supportive um, ever since day one I wanted to do this. And so, um, so are my friends. So I'm really thankful for my friends and family. Amen. Oh. Oh, I just wanted to say, Stephanie, <laughs> Laura Valentine, I have to tell you, this is not typical no. of a 17-year-old. 17, a 17 <laughs> Most 17-year-olds I know are self-centered. They're focused on self. They want to have that party. They want to do me, 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 me. And that's, that's pretty normal. One day yeah. they'll grow out of it. But, I mean, something had to happen on the inside of you. You said you were adopted twice, one by your, um, your, your, your family, your adoptive family, and into the body of Christ. Talk about your relationship with God. I mean, I would imagine that's what fuels this for you. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I've been growing up in a very strong Christian home, and my mom used to read my brother and um, me Bible stories before we would go to bed. And I remember one specific night, it was like mm. yesterday, um, I was three years old, and she asked me, Laura, would you like Jesus to come near your heart? And so I stood up on my bed with all the energy of a three-year-old and <laughs> screamed up to the heavens, Jesus, come into my heart right now. And he did, and he's been there ever since. And he is the fuel to my ministry. He is the reason he gave me my loving family. Like, mm. I couldn't ask for anything better. Wonderful. We're going to be right back <laughs> with more from Laura Valentine Line in just a moment. All right, we're back, and if you're just joining us, we're here today with Laura Valentine Locke, an adoption activist who's passionate about making a difference in today's youth by leading by example. And uh, Laura Valentine, let's let's talk about your name a little bit because okay. it's uh, you know hyphenated, Laura Valentine. We thought that was first and last, but that's all first. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the significance of your name? I was born on Valentine's Day, so I am a Valentine's oh, baby. I was born on Valentine's <laughs> no Day. No way. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, can we call you, you Valerie Valentine? Valentine? Oh. <laughs> no, I think Laura Valentine is very pretty. Go ahead. My grandma's <laughs> also born on Valentine's Day, and okay. her name is Valentine, but we call her Minnie. So it's, um, it's a very special tradition my mom passed on, I guess. Yeah, oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, getting back to uh, Laura Valentine Ministries, uh, You've got 11 children that you've helped so far in the last year or so, you mentioned, from different parts of the world. Uh, how does the support come in? How do people find out about what you're doing and, and connect with what you're doing? Well, it started out small as anything does. Um, I used to go and speak at chapels, and um, I would get specific people that would come in and ask me to raise money. And so I started singing at churches and telling my stories. I started at Adoption Month or uh, Orphan Sunday and performing. Mm -hmm. And so it just, um, I guess it just came in with yeah. God's grace. You know, God led the people to me and I just, I don't know, I just fulfilled it. I guess um, it's all been God's doing yeah. in what's been happening. Anyone else uh, follow your lead with their Sweet 16 that you know of? You're using, your, using their Sweet 16 party or birthday party to... Yeah. Uh, 
do it, something bigger? It actually started with my brother. Mm -hmm. My brother is a year older than I am. He's at Wheaton College. He's a freshman. And so he, um, he went to Uganda before I did. Mm. And he saw that, um, <laughs> there's my family. Um, <laughs> he saw that, um, that he really loved basketball. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a rec center at all at, um, in Uganda. And, you know, he, when he worked at the orphanage, he thought, you know, I want these kids to love what I do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he wants a safe environment. Mm -hmm. So for his sweet 16, he raised money to build the first public basketball court in Makono, Uganda. Wonderful. Yeah. Man, you guys have got a great I family know. here. <laughs> <Right>? World changers. <laughs> well, Laura Valentine, what are you doing to influence your friends, to get on board? I'd imagine your personality is contagious. It'd be difficult to be <laughs> yeah. around you and not want to get on board. <sighs> How can other people get on board and do what you're doing? You know, um, they can just, you know, listen to God. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. um, it's the only thing you really can do because um, I remember when I was younger, I didn't really, like, listen to God, really. I kind of, I was like that reckless teenager that you said earlier before. I was very selfish. But you just have to open your ears and listen to God's calling. And, um, you know, it changes the world. You know, I never thought I would be doing this ministry right now. And here I am, you mm -hmm. know. And um, a lot of my friends do support me. You know, they, they come to my fundraisers. They um, come and they come to me with people who need help with raising money. And I'm like, yeah, sure, of course, for you, anything. So mm. it's, um, you know, just listen to God, I guess you could say. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your music career. And again, Laura's also, Laura Valentine's also a cheerleader and a high school senior. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your music career for a moment. Uh, My Sweet Home was your, your breakthrough debut album. You're working yes. on a new project now with Ian Eskelin from All Star United. Yeah. Uh, it seems like you're very busy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, wh what role does music play uh, in your life and, and why the, the push and the drive to, to pursue that? You know, it's a funny story. When I was little, um, my parents still tell me this. I am a very bubbly, um, effervescent little girl. And so um, when I was little, I used to walk up to strangers. It didn't matter where it was, when it was, who it was. And I would say, can I perform and dance for you? And we actually have video of that. <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would just start singing and In dancing. The street. Yes, it didn't matter at parties, at formal parties. Um, my parents would try to keep me locked in my room to go to bed. But no, I would sneak down the stairs and just start dancing and singing. And so I actually grew into a um, real thing. You know, every girl, I believe, as much as they want a sweet 16, they also want to be a little pop star, a little mm -hmm. diva, as my mom calls it. And so um, it just flourished. And it really turned out that I did have a gift from God to sing. And it just worked so well with my ministry mm. that it just plugged in. What, what's it like working with Ian Eskelin from All Star? Because he's been like a producer of the year for several years running. What's it like working with him? He's awesome. He's like he's like a little kid, but he's like cool to work with. He's very um he has great ideas. You know, it was fun writing songs with him and producing with him. He's just really laid back, but he's also very serious about what mm -hmm. he does. So he has that mixture of half and half, having fun and being serious because he knows um that this is important. So mm -hmm. it's just it was a I'm so happy to have been plugged in with him because I couldn't ask for a better producer. Mm. Well, Laura, uh, Laura Valentine, <laughs> um, adoption, November is a national adoption month. And for that person who's watching, who's kind of on the fence saying, well, maybe I'll do foster care and not adopt, but they, they have that in the back of their mind. What would you say to encourage them to go on and adopt that child? Well, you know, um, it could just change their lives. You know, I don't mm. think my parents realized that they would have me and then this would flourish you know it it all depends on god's plan and we got to remember that and we also you know adoption again it, it doesn't have to be the last resort it doesn't have to mm -hmm. it can be the first choice and i think adoption is beautiful and to have something special where um that kid is getting adopted twice first into their earthly home and then secondly into their heavenly home is just i think fantastic so where are you here i'm in uganda and that is santa claus as we called her because she <laughs> has to live at santa claus house and we're actually on the basketball court that oh, my brother, brother built. built yes cool wow. yeah i see the guy with the ball in the back yeah. there yeah. very cool uh we just got a, a a moment left here laura valentine and um what are some of the obstacles or hindrances that you've found people encountering when they have that desire 
to adopt? What should someone do first and foremost when it comes to, you know, fulfilling that desire to maybe adopt a child from an international home? Um, well, you know, some of the struggles is um, the regulations, mm -hmm. um, the visas, as we were earlier talking about in mm -hmm. Uganda. It, it really depends, but you know what? In the long run, I think it's worth it all, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. Um, my parents, you know, they, they lost a child that they were going to adopt, but they got me instead, so I think that's a better trade-off. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's, it's a tough process, but in the long run, um, it, there's so much love yeah. in it. There's so much, and it's just, again, it's a beautiful thing, and I think looking past those obstacles and looking at the big picture instead of the smaller picture, mm -hmm. I think, is the way to go. There you go. Helps you through it. Wonderful. Laura Valentine Locke, our guest today, fantastic story and, and passionate young lady uh, who's out there to make a difference in our world that we all need to be kind of following in, in those footsteps. To connect with Laura Valentine, go to www.laura-valentine.com or as always, you can go to harvest-tv.com. Click on show info in the menu bar. You'll find an easy way to link back to her site today. When we return here on Harvest, Brian Bush is going to give us an update on the latest news that's coming out of the Middle East. Stay with us. show is produced by La Cie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.